Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a video review of several new Asus products. I have the keyboard, the Azoth on the left, and I have the mouse pad and mouse collab with Aim Labs on my right. This is the Harp Ace, the pad is the Hone Ace. And my favorite product of the three is definitely going to be the keyboard. The keyboard has this nice metal alloy frame on top and then it has a plastic backing because it does have wireless capability. But it does have this nice OLED screen on the top right that you can customize with GIFs, put your logo on it. And it does have this nice little knob here at the top right which controls several features on the keyboard including volume and things like that, brightness of the RGB, etc. Now the typing feel of the board is definitely leagues apart of other boards in the ASUS lineup. We've tried the Strix Scope RX, the TKL version of that, as well as the Claymore. And those keyboards are great in their own right. They have metal alloy bodies. They have plastic backings as well because some of them are wireless. Some of them have an attachable numpad, which is a pretty cool feature. And the typing feel and sound are not bad for gaming keyboards, but definitely not something that I would main on a daily basis, either for typing and or gaming. I do have to say though that their best feature are those ROG RX RED switches. Those things do ha not have any side wobble at all. If I could take those switches and put them in a other board, I would absolutely do it because they just feel absolutely insane for gaming related purposes. If you hate wiggle on your switches, if you're kind of jiggle peeking with WASD and you hate that feel of side play on the switches, they perform really well in that regard. Getting though to the keyboard, the Azoth, I think it is just leagues ahead of the other things in their lineup because it just has this aesthetic that looks extremely clean and the typing feel being gasket mounted, which my copy does not have a whole lot of flex. It's not really a typical gasket board that you would expect with tons and tons of flex, but the switches feel fairly solid for gaming related purposes as well that come in this hot swap board. But again, that's the best feature is the fact that this is hot swap. So I can put any switch that I wanna put in this board and have my perfect customized gaming experience. Another great thing about the board is the RGB does look pretty good. Again, the OLED screen looks super nice, super easy to control, and the keyboard does have wired and wireless capability, and the wireless capability is very good. The battery life is pretty solid, but overall, the typing experience is solid, especially with your custom switches. In my opinion, you have a very robust keyboard here. You have the OLED screen, you have really nice keycaps that feel very textured out of the box. But my one complaint with the keycaps is over time and just my limited amount of time using them, I can already see that really nice texture that's on there already wearing off. And at a price point of $300, I really wish that wasn't the case uh, because they really were super nice out of the box, very grippy. It was almost like my fingertips were just glued to those keycaps. I think the OLED screen is awesome. I would love to get my own little custom logo there. And the knob, the functionality of that is really nice and just super easy to control everything I really need to control. I love the layout and that nice metal alloy frame on top it really does provide a nice sleek look. I think the only thing that really screams Asus gamer aesthetic are those keycaps, which you can of course change off. And the back of the board is a plastic frame because of that wireless connectivity. You can see there at the top, your dongle can rest right there, but you do have Bluetooth as well as 2.4 gig wireless and USB-C connectivity. So you're getting a lot of connectivity for the board, um, but unless you're really utilizing all of it, I mean, $300 is just a lot of money. My QK60, which I have right here, is still my favorite keyboard that I've made to date. And just the typing experience for the amount of money, um, I just probably wouldn't really personally be in the market for the Asus board. If somebody really, really loves that OLED screen though, I could certainly see somebody getting a lot of great use out of this, especially if you're gonna use all of the connectivity. But in terms of the typing experience for me, coming from custom boards, it's definitely a league above every other gaming keyboard on the market, including the Wooting in terms of just the typing feel. But I don't really get the benefit of that gasket mount. I mean, you have to push extremely hard to get the benefit of that. But they did go through nice lengths to make sure that there's a lot of pour-on foam in there, a silicone pad. So the sound profile happens to be really nice. And even better, you guys will hear when I put my custom switches in this board.
And I've got the default switch and a lubed Gateron CJ switch. The keyboard being as robust as it is, I really do enjoy it. Would I pay $300 for it? I personally would not. I think the default keycaps and the default switches just don't provide a really nice typing feel and take the board to the level that it could be. You guys heard the typing experience that I have with my own custom lube switches with these keycaps. And I think it really transcends the feel and the sound of the board. So the internals really are there to provide a really nice typing experience. But I do think that for me personally, having to pay $300, then get my own switches, get my own keycaps, it's a little bit too much money for me. I think the build again is robust and I do love that OLED screen. I think it's a really cool feature, but it depends if you'll wanna pay for it. That's it for the keyboard. Let's get to the mouse and the mouse pad. I think that both of these products are good, uh, but for me, they definitely don't shift into the boundary of greatness. Getting to the pad first, it is an all hybrid surface and it is a coated surface. And I think that that is going to be an issue over time because of course that coating will wear down. The pad is very smooth and kind of like a shaved down version of a he end. You don't get that abrasiveness, which I like, but that makes the pad very fast. And to me, for tack shooters, it definitely bordered on the level of uncontrollable. I think that if anybody is to focus on this pad, I personally had to tone down my sensitivity and it made the pad a lot more usable. On a faster sensitivity, it is definitely something that is wiggly and a little bit uncontrollable, again, particularly for tag shooters. Um, but even games like Apex, I felt my sensitivity and my tracking was just a little bit off base. I did not need to use the AimLab XROG 360 task in Aim Labs to recognize that my sensitivity felt too high and wiggly and I was overshooting. I think that the scenarios that this is advertised to get people to do, I think that is a little bit too much of a gimmick and I wouldn't really trust that that is going to help your sensitivity and your aim. And the reason why is every time you change your pad, you have a new sensitivity. Every time you change your mouse, you're going to have a different feel and a different sensitivity. And it's all muscle memory. So if you're gonna be changing your DPI from 400 to 800, it just takes time to adapt and get used to whatever sensitivity you're on. And as you adapt and, go, and grow stronger and more comfortable on whatever sensitivity, whatever DPI, whatever mouse, whatever mouse pad you're on, every time you go into Aim Labs, you're gonna feel more consistent and get higher scores on whatever settings you happen to be on. So a lot of it is muscle memory. I don't buy into there being some form of a program or an algorithm that's going to help you somehow fine tune and find your best sensitivity and your best DPI. Um, but again, certainly if you are going to try to do that, you're going to be limiting yourself to this particular pad because if you optimize your settings on this pad and try to go to a different pad, again, your sensitivity now is going to be entirely thrown off. I like the pad. I'm not in love with the pad. I think it's just falls into the bunch of pads that are kind of at that mediocre level. It's not something that is going to necessarily excite you a whole lot. If you, you know, touch this pad, in game, I don't think you're necessarily going to be like, this is my main pad. Again, it's good. I just don't think that it's necessarily something that I can sit here and tell you guys that it is absolutely leagues above everything else. And again, I think the measurement system, I think the stuff with Aim Labs, I think it's all a gimmick. I don't think it's gonna help you at all. That's just my opinion. Again, I've never used Aim Labs. I've never had to use any of the scenarios. I just think that, again, you would be limiting yourself to specifically this pad. If you wanna do it, that is up to you, but I would not particularly main this pad. So that's, you know, that's kind of where I stand with the mouse pad. In terms of the mouse, everything feels um, pretty good in terms of weight and weight balance. There is maybe a little bit of uh, additional weight towards the back of the mouse. And I think that the coating feels okay when you first take it out of the box. As soon as you start using it and it, st it starts to accumulate a little bit of moisture, a little bit of humidity in your environment, this coating actually gets so slippery that it just becomes a muddled mess and doesn't feel good at all. I think the overall shape of the mouse is actually going to be its biggest downfall. The mouse is just far too long and the way that the hump is designed with being a very long hump, it kind of forces a little pocket in your hand here to be filled with the backside of the mouse 
and that pushes my fingers actually back from the front of the mouse, which is okay because then my finger is somewhat more aligned with the scroll wheel and mouse three. But if you are to grip the mouse and have your fingers at the front of mouse one and mouse two to hit mouse three and scroll wheel, it actually feels very odd and awkward. I think if you're going to be claw gripping with the mouse aggressively, it is okay. You get pretty decent inner hand maneuverability. If you're going to be finger tipping with this mouse, it feels very odd because again, you hit that pocket of your hand too quickly. And if you're going to be palming with the mouse, it just feels very long and to me a little bit uncomfortable. So depending on what grip you have, um, you know, the mouse could feel a little bit better for you, a little bit worse. The weight, the weight balance feel absolutely fantastic. These switches are very crisp, but a little bit heavy. Um, so kind of like the KL 8.0 implementation on the Pulsar, I think that I don't have any issue with heavy switches, uh, but I know a lot of people did have complaints about that on the Pulsar X2, the original uh, Pulsar X2. So I would definitely point out that they do feel a little bit heavy, but I personally think that a little bit of heaviness actually provides just such a, a crisp click. It's almost like you're popping your knuckle with how that switch feels. In terms of the overall quality of Mouse 1 and Mouse 2, I have minimal side flex, minimal pre and post travel. I just don't find either of those to be any obstacle to my gaming experience here. Switch grinding, I have none, and holding Mouse 1 or Mouse 2 in game, um, I don't feel any wiggle on the plastic over Mouse 1 and Mouse 2. The side buttons to me have a little bit of pre-travel um, and just a bit of post-travel on one of my side buttons. I don't think that that is going to present any issue in game either. And I do want to point out that the mouse does come with uh, larger skates for the top. Um, the bottom skates, again, are the same. Um, and they, again, feel like the to me, they feel like the Viper Ultimate default skates, which to me, uh, they don't feel bad by any stretch of the imagination. And the mouse does come with grips, which in my opinion are going to be necessary. I would totally recommend that you put the grips on. I have not tried the grips yet. You guys can see it's still on the paper that comes in the box, um, but I would absolutely recommend using the grips because again, the coating on the mouse just is kind of mid. So at $150, I think that the shape of the mouse is its biggest downfall. It feels just way too long. With how long it feels and how light it is, my copy at 54 grams, it actually does feel a lot lighter than that. And if you're going to be using a fast pad like this, for me, I, for the first time in a long time, actually had to tone down my sensitivity a little bit. When I did, the combination actually felt really good. I played well. But again, I think a lot of people are going to have issues with how long this mouse is. And, you know, if it does work for you and your hands are long enough and you palm mice, um, I do think that you might actually really enjoy it because, again, the weight balance, the switches, the build quality, everything actually feels good. Um, for me, the shape was just a miss. Again, for me, for you, it might work uh, really well. So that is it, guys. I'm going to leave you guys with a little montage. The gameplay here on this, when I did fine-tune my sensitivity, um, was actually pretty good.
So guys, just a quick summary. I think that the keyboard is great. I just don't really feel the price of $300. I think the mouse and pad are good. For me, they're not my preferences. For you, you might absolutely love them. They could be main material. Again, I think that the shape of the mouse is maybe an inhibiting factor for most. If you have really large hands and depending on your grip, it could really work for you. Overall, the quality on all three of these products is great. And just word to Asus, if you guys are going to continue to go in this direction, you guys are going to absolutely kill it. I have no doubt in my mind if you guys continue with this quality, you guys are going to be at the top of the game. Everything here feels fantastic compared to the previous offerings. I hope that helped, guys. If it did, please leave a sub to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.